Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be going over everything in the Dwarven Mines. Now, I will have a follow-up video talking about the Crystal Hollows, but hopefully this should cover everything you need to know, whether you are a new player or just getting into it. Now, thank you very much to Pomkey who helped me a whole bunch out with this video, and also thanks to them if you do visit my island with slash visit honestly fire. I haven't quite expanded the cookie yet, but I have got these cookies here, so if you want a fast travel point to the Dwarven Mines, you're welcome to get there. Now, onto the video. Now, before you can speak to the NPC who will let you unlock the Dwarven Mines, you first need to reach mining level 12. A lot of people will just do this legitimately by mining redstone, lapis, and whatnot in the deep caverns, but a faster way of doing this is if you instead come on over to the mine merchant, speak to him, and grab yourself a gold ingot. Of course, you can just do this manually, and then grab a couple of sticks to craft yourself an enchanted golden shovel. Now, this golden shovel is only going to need to be efficiency 5, and there is, if we come into this librarian's room here, and let me just go you, there's our sticks, there's our gold, and here is our golden shovel. If we come into the librarian's room, there is going to be an enchanting table which will allow us to get efficiency 3, or alternatively, if you speak to him, you can buy the efficiency books, there we go, and combine them. But once you've got this efficiency 3 golden shovel, you'll be able to come through the farming area past the barn, across into the farming islands. You will need to get farming five, but trust me, it takes about 30 seconds to do that. Come on straight to the end until we can get ourselves into the mushroom desert. This sand right here, you can see someone doing it already, is gonna be your fastest early strategy for getting your mining up. If you run around mining sand like this, you will get incredibly fast mining EXP. It takes about five minutes to get yourself up to mining level 12. And the added bonus is the fact that all of this sand can be combined into a sand minion, and that sand minion is going to help you with unlocking your early slots. You can also sell this sand for a few hundred thousand coins, so if you're really struggling for early methods, it's not a terrible one to get started. First things first, if you come to the bottom of the deep caverns, we'll see this NPC right behind us called Reef. If you speak to him, he's going to ask you to give ten times of a various enchanted material. You're going to have to do this three times. The most common way of doing this is going to be to give him enchanted coal, enchanted lapis, and enchanted redstone. But you can actually get around this by first visiting in one lobby and giving 10 enchanted lapis, then swapping to a different lobby and giving him lapis two more times. So even though it says you need to give three different ones, you can actually get around that. Once you've done that, it will give you your first heart of the mountain level and take you in to the dwarven mines. Now from the dwarven mines, you do have this guide here. Definitely worth speaking to it. We give you a general indication. But one of the more important commands that you'll first unlock is this slash HOTM Heart of the Mountain. This is going to bring you to your general skill tree, which you'll be able to upgrade to give yourself various different perks. Now, you'll see here coal, diamonds, and emeralds, as well as a couple of block things. When you first started, you'll only have this mining speed unlock. When you click on it, you will unlock it, and then you'll be able to upgrade it using mithril powder. Now, like any other skill tree, this will start from the bottom down here, and then you'll be able to use tokens to go up once you unlock them. Your tokens can be unlocked by two methods. Either firstly, by gaining Heart of the Mountain tiers. These start at one and go all the way up to seven at the top. Or by upgrading this separate perk called Peak of the Mountain, which you can see there among a bunch of other things that it gives you. Token of the Mountain is one of the various buffs that you get. Now, in order to upgrade these, you'll need to use something called Mithril Powder. Whenever you mine a Mithril, you'll gain two things. The mithril itself, which comes in the form of prismarine shard fragment things, which is a sellable item either to NPC or bazaar, and can be used to craft a bunch of stuff, as well as mithril powder, which works kind of like your purse and bits, in as much as it's a currency that you can spend that isn't a physical item. And you can see your mithril powder there. If you look at the bottom of this, you'll see tokens of the mountain at the top, which is how many tokens I've got, and then how much mithril and gemstone, which we'll get into later, powder I've got at the bottom. If you want to see how much you've already spent, come over to this reset button. And as you can see there, you can spend 100,000 coins to completely reset your tree. For the time being, when you've just started, you're going to start with mining speed and go straight for this thing right here, mining speed boost. 
These blocks, of which there are four in the corners, are different abilities, which when you right click with them will give you that perk. But you can only have one ability active at any one time. And Mining Speed Boost is definitely going to be the one you want at the start. Now, if we instead go straight ahead, straight down to this slime block thing here, and we bounce on that, then we'll be able to come up to the top here and have an NPC called Fetcher. If you speak to Fetcher, and you can do this once every day, he will give you a quest like this, of which all of the quest answers are going to be on screen now. But that brown and fluffy three, in this instance, I know that that's rabbit feet. So if I wanted to grab them, I would go onto the bazaar, go onto farming, rabbit, grab three of those. Let me grab. Oh, now we'll just do it as an insta buy so we don't have to wait. Grab you, and then you will have to hold those in your hand. Right click on him, and it will give you 20,000 coins and mithril powder. Now, we'll get into events in a little bit, but do keep in mind that for both Fetcher and the Puzzler, who I'm going to walk to now, straight on through these golden gates and across the bridge. And once we get across that bridge, there's a little arch thing, and then we can go directly to the left, up this staircase, and there we go. The Puzzler will be chilling in here. As I was saying, the Mithril Powder you're given from both Fetcher and the Puzzler will be doubled if there is a double powder event. So it's definitely worth looking out for one. Now, once you speak to the Puzzler, he will give you a bunch of arrows in chat like this. As it goes, I have a solver, so I know for a fact it's that block. But if you're playing without mods, you want to stand on his position facing the door. And then we can see there left, so we walk one block left. Up, 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 left, left, up, 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 down, up, so down, up, down, and then to the right, which lands us on this block. Once you break this block, you don't actually have to walk it, you just have to mine the block that it points to. You will again be given a thousand mithril powder. Another NPC it's worth talking to here is if we go back through again across the bridge through the golden gate this is going to be a very important place we have this king now when you speak to the king he will give you a bunch of commissions if you've just started out you'll only have two commission slots available but if you have a look at these milestones you'll be able to unlock additional commission slots based on how many commissions you've already completed these commissions will be relatively simple tasks usually relating to mithril or titanium Mithril being the main ore here, and titanium being something that can appear when mithril is mined, sometimes in a particular area. Now, in terms of the particular areas, again, map on screen now. I have taken this from the wiki. It's got a couple of useful things, which I'll point to in a second. But if you're ever lost, either come back to this video, have a look at that one, or if you have got the mod Skyblock Extras, which is a paid mod, it does have its own custom map, which you can use. As you can see here, our current task is to mine 350 mithril ore. And if I were a two plus tab and have a look at that second column there, about slightly under halfway down, you'll see commissions there which shows you how close you are to completing them all. Once you've completed a commission, you will come back to the king or the emissaries, which are other NPCs that can spawn based again on your milestones. You click on that commission, it will give you your powder, it will give you your mining XP, and it will move on to the next one. Again, for the first four commissions that you do, you will gain additional Mithril Powder. You can see that rewards 1.6k Mithril Powder daily bonus. That will occur four times, but because that is such a greater amount of Mithril Powder, I will say it is worth claiming these specifically in a Double Powder Lobby. If you have unlocked the Crystal Hollows, you can claim them in that Double Powder Lobby too, by either using the Abaphone if you've got one, or by using a royal pigeon, which you will unlock after 500 commissions, which allows you to speak to the king and claim your commissions from a distance. Each commission is also going to give you a whole bunch of mining XP, so if you've just started out, this is going to be your main source at the moment. In terms of the mithril itself, it's actually this stuff that appears in the wall. Now, a lot of newer players may think to mine either this blue stuff, the prismatic stuff around it, but in actuality, you're going to want to be mining mining this grey wool and grey concrete. All of it will give you mithril, and while the stuff closer to the middle will give you additional mithril, the commissions are almost always based on how many blocks you break, not how much mithril you get. 
so you'll want to be focusing on this grey wool and only be going anywhere near the middle stuff once you get a little bit later on. Now, when you're in the Dwarven Mines, I briefly mentioned the Double Powder event, but there are a few various events that can occur. Some of them will require active participation, and some of them are more like a passive stat boost. When they do require an active participation, if you come straight from the start of the Dwarven Mines and you talk to this guy right here, Old Man Gary, speaking to him will show you both when the next event is gonna be, but it will also give a little bit more information. As you can see there, they occur around every 20 minutes, but it's always the same events on the same server. And if you speak to him, this button will turn into a warp, which will warp you to the correct area, which is especially useful if you haven't yet got to grips on where everywhere on the map is. Now in terms of what these events are, the first one is going to be the double powder event. As I said, just means that you gain double mithril powder either when you're mining mithril itself or when you're claiming your commissions. Next is better together, which is one of the more useless ones. Technically speaking, you gain a bit of extra speed if you're stood near people, but in practice it's very, very rare that this is going to be the case. Gone with the Wind adds this little bar underneath your bits and purse. And if you aim that such that it goes into a darker green color, it will give you a 600 mining speed boost. Now, if you're just starting out, 600 mining speed is a lot of mining speed. So while later on this one becomes relatively useless, early it's definitely something to keep in mind. Goblin Raid is one that appears in a particular area in which a bunch of goblins will spawn, including these iron golems called Super Protectors. Now, if a Super Protector is nearby, you won't be able to attack the goblins, but especially early, this is gonna wanna be your main focus. Everybody who has damaged the Super Protector before it dies will be given an additional 10 kills towards the event, but more importantly, multiple people will gain these kills. As a result, what you're going to want to do is go between, hit all of the iron golems that you see once, and then either let somebody else take it out, or if it's already low on health or there aren't enough people helping you out, then you can just finish those off. But if you can't kill the goblins because they take damage on the basis of how many hits have been done, not on the basis of how much damage, this is going to be a really beneficial one. Next up, we've got Raffle. Again, this is a location one. Once you've walked to the location, you will see a giant box made out of note blocks and around the area will spawn a bunch of these tokens, these name tags called raffle tickets. Once you've grabbed all of these raffle tickets, you'll be able to put them back in the box. You do have to do this before the time ends, so make sure to be quick with it. Put them all back in, it will randomly roll, and depending on how many tickets you've got, you will gain a various amount of Mithril Powder, Mining EXP, and Heart of the Mountain EXP, and if you win the raffle, that will be tripled. Mithril Gourmet involves this guy right here, Don Espresso, who will begin angrily yelling about wanting Mithril. If you go to the area, or again get warped there, and start mining the mithril on the wall, you will be given an additional resource called Gourmet Mithril. If you go back to the start of the Dwarven Mines, straight ahead, and go to this area right here, you will be able to feed him this mithril, and from that gain various rewards as long as he gets to full. Finally, there is the Falling Star, which isn't an event as such, but involves this giant purple crystal and these little mobs that will spawn around him. You can either kill the mobs to get star full, or damaging them is a possible commission that you can get, or if you mine the nearby mithril, it will give you extra mithril and mithril powder, which can be very important when you're starting out. There is also this area here. If we go through the Golden Gate, but then rather than going directly forwards to the king, we instead jump off or we'll reach this lava area, which has two main NPCs, Joltrell in Great Forge, who will refill drills, which we'll get into later. Or if you come this way, you'll reach the forge. The forge can be used to create various items, and especially if you're on an Iron Man profile, this is going to be very important. You can also use the forge to make money, but we will be getting onto that in a later video. Calculator is in progress, and once it's been done, that video is going to get dropped. Two other things to note are going to be the bed nom quest, which if you go directly right up this staircase and then jump in through this little window, they're almost, there we go. You'll have this NPC here, again, bed nom. 
If you speak to him, he will request various items. And once you finish his quest and he starts talking about a location, you'll want to go straight to the end again here, down this staircase. And if you start mining, I believe it's this block here. It's one of these three. You'll open a chest which can give you some refined titanium and a couple of other stuff, which you can sell for a fair bit of money at the start of a new profile. Additionally, if we go again towards the king and shoot our way past him over to the back right, through this side door right here, we will be able to speak to the royal resident. This is an eight hour long quest, but once you've finally spoken to him, he will turn into a sheep called No Name give you a cape which is a reference to portal and you will get an achievement. There is also something called a dark monolith which is a dragon egg that can spawn in one of these 12 locations and clicking it for the first time will give you an achievement but it will also give you a bunch of different rewards the best of which is a rare fish which can be sold on the auction for a heck of a lot of coins. Now before we get into the actual gear that you need it's also worth talking about something called the mining sack. If we go into our collections right here, click onto mining collections and have a look in coal, then you'll see here, first unlocked at five, we unlock this recipe for something called a small mining sack. Now it's relatively cheap to craft, but this cannot be bought, cannot be traded, so you can't get somebody else to make it for you. Once you've got that sack, you can either keep it in your inventory or based on your pufferfish collection, you'll have this thing here called a sack of sacks. And if you keep your mining sack in there, it will automatically store all of the items in your mining collection, which can then be automatically sold right here. You can sell your sacks now, which saves you a load of inventory space especially when you get to the point of having higher mining fortune. Speaking of mining fortune, the mining staff that will come into play here, if you look, we've got mining speed and mining fortune, which appear in orange at the bottom. And we also have something called pristine, but that's only relevant for gemstones. So speed and fortune are gonna be our main things. Fortune is leveled up by getting your mining XP up, and all this means is you have an additional chance of dropping an additional ore. So if I have 50 mining fortune, when I mine a block, there is a 50% chance I will get two of that block. As soon as it passes 100, there is a 100% chance that you will get two, and say 250, a 50% chance of you getting three. Currently, I have 1,653 mining fortune, which means I will always get 16 and have a 53% chance of getting higher. If I were to max out my fortune, I could get this substantially higher, but I've currently got myself focused to speed for Kudra, but that is not something that you need to worry about for the time being. Now, when it comes to what armor you want to use, again, going through this gate, you'll be able to bounce up here and kind of parkour across this lava, walk along this crystal thing. You might have to be careful with the full damage, but once you finally get down here and go across this bridge, you will end up in an area with a load of Glacite Walkers. Now, these guys will hit quite hard if you've just started out, but if you want, you can kind of bounce your way up here, either using a block to block glitch or by using a jump potion, and you'll be able to stand here and hit them as they walk towards you, as long as there's nobody else killing them. You can either shoot these guys with a bow, as I'm doing here, but you'll see that the bow itself doesn't one-shot them. And what you'll want to do is grab yourself a pickaxe and probably the artisanal short bow from the weaponsmith NPC next to the mining one that we saw earlier in the hub. If you have a look, you go from your short bow, swap to a pickaxe, then by the time the arrow lands, you'll be holding your pickaxe and it will one-shot them. This will one shot from level zero. You can see he's using a pickaxe there, regardless of your combat stats. And it will drop this armor right here called Glacite Armor. If you pick up this Glacite Armor, you'll be able to wear this and it will give you a little bit of mining speed, a bunch of defense and speed. And I'm not sure if you saw there, but that extra mining speed based on your mining levels will also help out. And I probably recommend starting with this 
as your main mining armor. It can also be bought from the auction house, but it's a little bit expensive, it's about 50k, so if you're just starting out, I'd probably want to grind it myself. Other mining armors that you might see include Yog and Sorrow. Now, Sorrow is going to be your big upgrade from Glacite, and Yog armor, while not the best armor, does have some relevance when we get to the Crystal Hollow. The other mining armor that people may use is Goblin armor, but as this one's main perk is converting your intelligence into mining speed, if you're just starting out, you're probably going to have a lower intelligence than you do mining level, so it especially initially, it's not going to be worth it. Now, Sorrow, which we briefly mentioned, is going to be your next upgrade from Glacite. It gives a bunch more mining fortune, it gives a bunch more speed, and is all around a relatively good set, but it is quite expensive. If we have a look at the lowest price for a chest plate, you can see it's 11.2 mil at the moment. Sorrow armor is crafted by using three in each slot of an item called Sorrow. So if we have a look at the Sorrow chest plate, you'll see we have to place three Sorrows in each one, and those come from these ghosts which appear down in this area called the mist these are very difficult to kill initially you can see if i try and kill one in my divin's armor i'm not gonna have a chance and people will generally be using a high damage weapon such as a giant sword or a claymore to kill them although there is another strategy people will use which involves wearing massive armor and using a pooch sword as the pooch sword gains crit damage based on your health and Mastiff Armor gives you a whole bunch of health. Now, in terms of your pickaxe, if we again come straight from the warp and speak to this NPC right here, Boo Boo, you will see a bunch of different pickaxes that you can buy. These are gonna be limited by your Heart of the Mountain level, so the first one you're gonna to have to get is this Mithril pickaxe, but when you first start out, you'll actually want to keep using a diamond pickaxe. While the diamond pickaxe does have a lower breaking power, which means it can't mine mithril, the mithril pickaxe is actually slightly slower. And so until you can upgrade to a bandage mithril pickaxe, you'll want to stick with the diamond one. I am only going to be talking about the dwarven mines here. So my recommendation here is that you next go to a titanium pickaxe and then to a refined titanium pickaxe. But if you are looking to go to the crystal hollows early, there will be a slightly different progression chain. After the titanium pickaxe, some people like to go for a mithril drill, which is this one right here. As you can see though, it's only a very minor increase from the refined titanium pickaxe. And so personally, I would skip this one unless you're planning on buying it and then immediately reselling it. Your next big thing is gonna be for a titanium drill, which upgrades over time, as this will ultimately upgrade into the Divins drill, which is the best drill in the game. The alternative is gonna be the Gemstone Gauntlet, which is better than the 355, but worse than the 555. But this one is gonna have a Heart of the Mountain requirement of six, so it's quite expensive to get started with. Your other option, if you do have coins to burn, is going to be buying a bunch of this item right here, called the Pick a Nimbus 2000. Obviously a Harry Potter reference, but if we have a look at this pick right here, this will give you 1,500 mining speed, which is the best by far. The only problem is that it breaks after 5,000 uses. If you've got the money, and again, if you are in need of early game money, would very much recommend looking at this composter video right here. But that pick on Nimbus is going to be your best progression skip, but it is going to be burning money until you get to the later stage of mining, as it's 450,000 coins for every 5,000 blocks that you break. Next up, we can have a look at pets. Keep in mind that these pets perks will depend on the rarity of the pet itself. So if you get yourself a common variation, it will be nowhere near as good and might be completely useless compared to the legendary. If we have a look at these pets, the first one I want to point out here is going to be this silverfish. This silverfish will give you mining wisdom, which is essentially a mining EXP boost, and a legendary one will give you haste three. If you haven't yet got round to get your infinite god pots and booster cookies, is going to be very beneficial, but it's definitely that mining EXP that I'd be focused on. The other one that you might want to think about using here is this mithril golem, as it gives you extra mithril powder and a hundred mining speed, which again, not loads later, but when you've just started is pretty good. 
The other pet that's worth pointing out is going to be this rock pet. If we have a look at him here, its actual perks have pretty much nothing to do with mining, but you will gain this pet for free if we have a look in our skills, mining, and this right here, this rock milestones. We'll gain this pet for free, depending on the number of ores we've mined. And if we come back to the hub, go straight over to here. This building right here, if we go upstairs, we'll be able to speak to George, who is willing to buy our legendary rock pets for 10 million coins, which is a major coin inflection when you've just started the game. In terms of the other mining pets that exist, there is this snail pet right here who will convert your speed into mining fortune, but this only applies to non-ores. So cobblestone, nether rat, sand, that kind of thing. And so isn't gonna be worth using in the dwarven mine. Other pets that are just unrelated to mining are gonna be your ammonite, which is a fishing pet that levels up with mining EXP, your bat pet, which is used for the spooky event, and again, mining EXP, with the skeleton, which is a very good combat pet, mining EXP, and your endermite, which is used for pet luck. In terms of later game mining pets, We've got the Armadillo right here, who only really has use in the Crystal Hollows. We have the Scather pet, which is going to be the best mining pet in the game. And then finally, we've got this Bal pet right here, who looks a little bit like a Magma Cube. And again, only going to have use in the Magma Fields, if you look at that third perk, which is an area in the Crystal Hollows. Now, finally, in terms of the Mayoral Election, Cole will give up to three perks. Currently, he is going to have all three. 60 extra Mining Wisdom, which, as we know, is going to be a 60% buff to our EXP. Prospectation, which means your Mining Minions are going to work 25% faster. And finally, this main one right here, the Mining Fiesta. Now, if you want to check when the mining fiestas are, you'll go onto your skyblock menu, calendars and events, and full calendar. And in the same way that we have like a Ringo visiting, wheat competitions, dark auctions, etc., etc., we'll start to see pickaxes appearing here, a bit like the pumpkins. These will last six hours, and during that time, you will earn double drops from every mining thing, which is amazing, as well as this item in oddities called refined minerals. Now, refined minerals can be used to make a talisman, which is, of course, amazing, as well as this armor called mineral armor, this set right here, which allows you to mine extra nearby blocks. But as you can see there, it requires a breaking powder less than four. So why this can be useful for mining diamonds, emeralds, lapis, that kind of thing, it won't work on mithril. If you are interested on getting as many of these minerals as possible, possibly because you want to max out the talisman, if we go back into the dwarven mines, jump up through this cobblestone slate, we'll be able to see these giant barrel crate thingamajigs. And while the first one does have mithril in, if we go further down the end, and then jump off onto these next carts. We'll see these ones down here, diamonds, lapis, emeralds, and again through here, more with gold as well. And you'll be able to use that mineral armor with your pickaxe to mine a whole bunch of those all at once. The last thing I thought I'd point out, if you come to this middle area where this giant purple crystal is, jump up and you look for a little hole in the wall here, you'll come to a strange empty room. If you come here on Thursday specifically, you will see a bunch of cult members here who will first give you a special hat and then after that give you Starfall. While I don't think it's worth it, the Starfall will only sell for a few hundred coins and can be easily got from these fallen stars that we spoke about earlier. I believe it does give you an achievement, so it is worth doing once. Then just as a last thing to note, once we've got to the Glacite area, if we instead turn right and go up here, we'll see a bunch of goblins that spawn. Killing these goblins will give you the goblin armor that we spoke about earlier, as well as these things called goblin eggs. And those goblin eggs can be sold on the bazaar for a little bit of money. It's about 22k, which isn't bad when you first started out. You can also use various methods to stand in this fire and either using a bal pet, frozen blaze, or something similar. People will try and AFK these goblins, usually either holding a raider's axe or a daedalus axe to gain the goblin eggs. 
but AFKing is in the constant state of being nerfed, and so I wouldn't recommend it. Also, just a little bit of trivia, we spoke briefly about the sorrows that you can kill for either money or the sorrows themselves, but they used to have a chance to drop this item here called a bag of gold, which can now only be obtained from the Crimson Isle and is soulbound. It used to be gained from sorrows instead of the million coins. Now, I hope that covered basically everything that you'll need to know about the Dwarven Mines. Like I say, next week I am going to have something about the Crystal Hollows. If I did miss anything, drop it in the comments and I will make sure to include that in the next video. As always, if you've got any questions about Hypixel Skyblock, feel free to drop them in the comments and I will do my very best to help you out. But I hope you all have a good night. Bye guys!